Welcome to this service of worship on this, the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost for 2021. My name is Colleen Lismer and I am deacon here at the Church of the Advent during this time of transition. As we meet today, we begin by remembering the Songhees and Esquimalt nations on whose traditional land we now gather in gratitude. We acknowledge their story and their stewardship of the land and water, the plants and the animals, through the many generations. As we meet today, we remember those who have called this place their home in recent years, the community of faith known as Church of the Advent. Let us greet one another with words and signs of welcome. Come, come with your doubts, your strengths, your weaknesses, and your fears, for God loves us all and all are welcome in this space. We invite you to come and join our readers, prayer leaders, music director and choir members, along with our technical team, as we offer prayer and praise to our Creator. Scripture shares with us, our Saviour Jesus Christ has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel. Our opening hymn is from the Gather Hymn Book, number 680, We Walk by Faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join with me in the spirit of this prayer. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy upon us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And please join with me in the words of the collect appointed for today. Almighty and ever-living God, you heard the cries of your people enslaved in Egypt and sent your servant Moses to lead them out of slavery. Free us from the tyranny of sin and death. By your Holy Spirit, bring us to knowledge of your love and goodness towards us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our service now continues with the story of our faith proclaimed. And now it's time for our chat at the chancel. Oh, I think I see it. Oh, I see it. I'm sure I see it now. Now you may be asking yourself, what am I seeing? Well, that's a really good question. Sometimes I could be talking about seeing something way far off from me. Maybe a boat, or an airplane, or a planet, or the moon in the darkness of the night sky. And that's why sometimes we use binoculars so that we can see things that are far away. It could also be something that's so small, so tiny, that I might need a magnifying glass or a microscope to be able to see it. 
Or sometimes it may be the love that we see in the faces of those who care for us and want us to be happy. We use our eyes to see many things, things that may be very, very large, things that may be very, very small. God gave us the ability to use our eyes so our brains up here could interpret what we are looking at. But sometimes our eyes may not work the way God intended them to function. Sometimes people are born without the ability to see with their eyes. Others have problems with their eyesight as they journey through their lives. One day, Jesus met a man, a man named Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was blind. Now, being blind meant that he couldn't see anything very well. Bartimaeus heard Jesus coming his way. He called out to Jesus, asking to be healed. Now, there were others there who tried to stop him from calling out. But Bartimaeus wanted to be able to see, to see with his eyes. Jesus heard him calling and invited Bartimaeus to come to where Jesus was. Jesus asked Bartimaeus what he wished Jesus to do for him. Bartimaeus responded to Jesus and asked him to give him back his eyesight. So you know what happened? Because Bartimaeus believed that Jesus could heal his eyes, Bartimaeus suddenly was able to see everything around him. He was so happy that he followed after Jesus. Now, sometimes we see things in many different ways. Some things are real, like watching an airplane fly back past us in the sky. And some things we feel in our hearts and in our minds, like the love we feel from our moms, from our dads, sisters and brothers, grandparents, aunts and uncles. And sometimes we may never be able to see some things like those tiny little things I was talking about that we need to use a microscope or magnifying glass to see. But we know that God loves us and we can see God's love for us in everything around us. Isn't that neat? Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for all that we see around and within us. You have given us eyes to see and ears to hear. Help us to use our senses to know that you are with us every day. Amen. And our chat song for today is taken from More Voices, number 87, Water Flowing from the Mountain. A reading from Job 42, 1-6 and 10-17. to Then Job answered the Lord, 
I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? I have been holding forth on matters I cannot understand, on marvels beyond me and my knowledge. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job because he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, and he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Gemaniah, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapich. In all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived for 140 years and saw his children, his children's children, four generations. And Job died old and full of days. For the word of God is scripture, for the word of God is among us, for the word of God is within us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 34 and is found on page 744 in your book of Alternative Services. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant. Let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses, encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. A reading from Hebrews, chapter 7, 23 to 28. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number, because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently, because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. For the word of God is scripture, for the word of God is among us, for the word of God is within us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our hymn of the day is from Common Praise number 445, God the Creator.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. They came to Jericho, and as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our sermon this morning is from Lisa Broderson, a wise and valued member of our parish and a theologian in her own right, who will share her insights into today's readings. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, and no. When he walked this earth as one of us, he taught the people in ways they understood. He told stories about sheep, oxen, vineyards, virgins with oil lamps. That was then, but this is now. Those are not familiar images of daily life here and now to which people can relate. What modern young woman relates to virgins or oil lamps? Teenage girls forgetting to charge their cell phones, maybe. Not just images, but ways of expressing things. We tend to forget that the people we now refer to as saints were just ordinary people trying their best, just like us. Look at the time Peter thought he was being supportive, but he wasn't. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. What young man today would talk to his friend like that? What was the message Jesus was conveying to Peter? Of today's young men would understand it. Knock it off, Pete. You're not helping. Another thought along these lines. The parable of the prodigal son. That timeless story of love, forgiveness, and second chances, told then in words we were all familiar with, but if Jesus were telling it now, in BC, in 2021, maybe it would go something like this. Once upon a time, there was a rancher in the interior. He had thousands of acres and thousands of cattle, and he also had two sons. The oldest one was very thoughtful and responsible, trustworthy and hard-working, but if truth be told, a bit of a prig, a bit self-righteous and smug. He didn't particularly enjoy ranching for his father, but he was the kind of man who knew his duty when he saw it, and was going to do it, even though he viewed his work more as slavery than a satisfying career. The younger son was a different person altogether. He was a bit of a scamp, full of fun and charm, teased his serious older brother, which didn't go down too well because Big Bro didn't have much of a sense of humor. One day, the younger boy talked to his father along these lines. Look, Dad, I don't want to spend my whole life having seen nothing but cattle and coyotes. 
when you die, I will inherit my share, but God willing, you will live to be 110. And I'd be too old to enjoy the money. So will you give me my share now, or at least a part of it, so I can go off and see the world while I'm still young? Father agreed, transferred a considerable sum of money into Junior's bank account, and off he went. He flew to Vegas, where he lived the high life. Champagne, cigars, limos, girls. He had a grand time, making lots of new friends along the way. After some time, the money ran out. And oddly enough, at the same time, so did the friends. Junior had to look for work, but he had no experience of anything other than ranching. No training, no references. So he ended up earning minimum wage, cleaning out the pig pens on a farm outside the town. This added insult to injury because our boy was Jewish and pigs are definitely off the menu, not even to be approached. The pig farmer treated his pigs well and our boy found himself thinking that he wouldn't mind having some of the corn he was throwing to the pigs. Well, that brought him up short. He thought about how even the lowest ranking casual laborer on his father's ranch earned more than he did, and certainly ate better. He decided he had been a first-class idiot, and a thoroughly bad son as well, and he would go home and confess that to his father, and ask for a job as a day laborer. But that was all he deserved, and he wasn't sure he deserved even that. Well, he may have flown into Nevada, but he certainly didn't fly out. He hitched rides from there to BC, and did a lot of walking in between. His father saw him walking when he was some distance away, and that caught his attention. People either drove cars or rode horseback. He went to sea, and when he was close enough to recognize the boy, he broke into a run. His son only had the time just to get started on what he wanted to say, and his father crushed him in a bear hug and just about carried him home. He dressed him in one of his good suits, and a decent pair of shoes, and because the kid had to sell his watch to buy food, Dad gave him a Rolex to wear. He said, we're going to have the biggest barbecue ever, with the best steaks and wine and music and dancing. Phone the neighbors and get the word out. Meanwhile, the oldest son had been out on horseback riding the ranch, slept on his bedroll under the stars the previous night. And as he neared home, all he could think of was a hot shower and maybe a cold beer. Coming over the hill, he saw the party getting started. Cars in the driveway, music and dancing. He got out his cell phone and texted the ranch office. And they told him what had happened. Well, that was a shock. And he was angry. And decided he wasn't going to have any part of it. So his father came out to talk to him. And heard the whole tale of woe. I've worked my butt off all these years and never complained and always done what you asked. You never told me I could have a big party with my friends and all the best food and wine. 
But as soon as he shows up, having wasted your money and spent time with women who are no better than they should be, you do everything short of a parade. Father said, son, you could have had a party any time you wanted. You live here. Everything I have is yours to enjoy. I see you every day and know you are safe and well. But my youngest son could have been dead for all I knew. And my heart ached. But now I know he is not dead but alive. He was lost and has been found. Now do you see what I meant at the beginning by saying that Jesus is the same but not the same? The story is different, but the same. And the message to the original listeners and to us is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Shirley will lead us in a time of prayer. Prayers of the people. Our faith is centered on Christ who revealed to us the healing touch of God's justice and mercy. We call upon God to continue healing and justice in our lives and in the world. I will end each petition with, for this we pray. Please respond with, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May leaders of government see the needs of the oppressed and respond with justice. For this we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May your church continue Christ's mission of healing and offer all communities your blessings so all might see and know your saving power. May those in need of healing find in Christ a source of strength in their struggles. We pray for Cynthia, Irene, Travis, Bill, Christopher, Diane, Sheila, Barb, Kian, the residents and staff of West Shore Care, and any others you wish to name aloud or silently in your hearts. For this we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May those who have not discovered ways to be of service be challenged to seek justice and healing in their lives of faith. For this we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Loving Creator, we pray for all who mourn, we ask that they find comfort in you. We ask for your strength for them in their time of need. Let them know they are loved and wrap them in your love and warmth. We pray for the family and friends of Bob Flint, especially his wife Peggy, and their children, Darlene, Heather, Dave, and Russ. For this we pray, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. We ask blessings on all hospital workers all members of our military, police, firefighters, and first responders. Please watch over those here at home and those deployed throughout the world and return them safely to their family. For this we pray. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, we seek your face in our lives. Touch us with your spirit of justice and healing. Through Christ your Son, 
in whom we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them into his grace. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And now may Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And now let us join together in the prayer that our Lord himself taught us as we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now it's time for a blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge of God our Creator, Jesus Christ our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And now it's time for shared ministry. And three things that I want to share with you today. The first would be that um, we uh, congratulate Donna Brandel and Elizabeth Bennett of our parish, who both received the Order of the Diocese yesterday. Um, it's great that uh, they've been recognized uh, by the diocese for their work within our parish and beyond. Uh, the second thing is, uh, just to let you know, service is coming up um, on the 31st of October, which happens to be Halloween. It is the eve of All Saints Day, and we will be uh, observing All Saints Day on October 31st here in the parish. The following Sunday on the 7th of uh, November, uh, it is our tradition to do Remembrance Day observance the Sunday before the actual day of remembrance. So we will have our Remembrance Day uh, remembrance uh, on that day. Um, that's all I have for you right now. So our commissioning hymn for today is taken from Common Praise number 450. You call us Lord to be.
time for our commissioning. Oh God, you have promised through your son to be with your church forever. We give you thanks for those who founded this community of believers and for the signs of your presence in our congregation. Increase in us the spirit of faith, love, and sharing of our gifts with all peoples. Make this congregation an example of your love for all peoples. Through the power of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you.